None of the Apollo missions brought any extra studio lighting with them on the lunar lander, so the sun should be the only light source on the moon, and in all pictures taken there. In that case, the light should only come from one direction, and all shadows should be cast in the opposite direction. However, in dozens of official NASA photos, there are shadows being cast in up to three directions simultaneously, often at up to 90 degree angles, which can only be the result of multiple light sources not present on the moon. In images from Apollo 11, Buzz Aldrin can be seen wearing different color gloves and different length boots in pictures that were supposedly taken within minutes of each other. If Buzz was really in the vacuum of space in a pressurized spacesuit, he certainly would not have had time or reason to depressurize and repressurize his suit just to make such fashion adjustments. Some pictures show the lunar rover with no tracks anywhere around it. Others show rover tracks all over the foreground while it is yet to be unpacked and unloaded. A couple pictures even show what appear to be sneakers and ladies' heels tracks on the moon, in addition to astronauts' boot prints. NASA image AS1140-5926 shows a close-up of the footpads of the lunar lander without a speck of dust on them and without a burn print under its 10,000-pound thrusters like it was just gently set down in place. NASA scientists in their own documents were worried about the LEM falling into its own massive burn radius, yet there it sits with no burn print and spotless clean pads. Even the astronauts' boot prints made deep impressions in the moon dust, yet the lander's 10,000 pound thrusters left not a trace, no blast hole, and no dust on the pads. Eugene Cernan of Apollo 10 and 17 said in an interview that as they descended in the lander that the engine was very loud. Yet when Alan Bean of Apollo 12 was asked the same question, he answered that you couldn't hear the engine at all in the vacuum of space. I tend to believe Alan, because watching the Apollo 17 liftoff sequence from the moon, it is clear that the LEM is being hoisted by a crane from above and not propelled by thrusters from below. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. Hello, Apollo 11. Houston, Goldstone says that the TV looks uh, great. Over. Okay, uh, Roger, we're uh, We can see uh, the oceans with uh, a definite blue cast. see white bands of major cloud formations across the Earth. Uh, Roger, the ATC is working real well. The F-22 looks good, over. Houston, uh, did you copy? Over. Roger, we copied that, Charlie. Uh, Roger, your transmission the last couple of times has been about uh, two by, over. Okay, how do you read me now? Roger, you're five by now. What mission? Apollo 11. Yes. And the photography is being forged in the mission. They're faking a shot of being halfway to the moon. And they refer to you on the tape as a shot that was done during Apollo 10, where you put a transparency over the window and move the camera of the Earth and move the camera back away from the window, turn off the lights in the spacecraft, and appeared to be halfway to the moon when in fact they were in Earth orbit. Huh, really? As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. 
Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. Any ill effects from the Van Allen radiation belts? No, now I'm not sure we went far enough out to, to encounter the Van Allen radiation belt. Maybe we did. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. I don't know the distance to the Van Allen radiation belt, and if we did, it wasn't a problem. The belts are 1,000 miles to 25,000 miles above then, the Earth. We, then we went right out through them. No effects on your cells? Mm -mm, didn't even know it. I don't think anybody, well, maybe somebody said you went through the radiation belt, but we didn't feel it inside, and we didn't get any you know, added radiation. You know, the shuttle doesn't have the capability to, to fly very far away from Earth, uh, maybe three, 400 miles. Uh, I don't know exactly how far out the radiation Van Allen belt is. It, it didn't seem to bother us very much. Did you see shooting stars? Uh, it, so I, I, don't, I don't know the results of some of the experiments they've conducted. The point is they can't get that far from here and, and they're really in the protective confines of the Earth, uh, outside the atmosphere certainly. Now on the way to the moon, we did conduct a lot. We didn't just, we weren't passengers away to the moon. We're passengers. We conducted all kinds of experiments and, and one of them was an experiment where we closed our eyes and then we put some light sensitive pads on our eyes and we could literally, yes, we could see, we could see traces of radiation or traces of something going through our eyes. We conducted this experiment both going to the moon and coming back from the moon several times. We then we went right out through them. No effects on your cells? Mm -mm, didn't even know it. I don't think anybody, well maybe somebody said you went through the radiation belt, but we didn't feel it inside and we didn't get any you know, added radiation. I circled the Earth about uh, one and a half times and headed out to the moon for a three-day voyage when we got there. So the engine you, is loud? You get, you get, pardon? Is the engine loud as you're descending? We get, well, the engine is very loud. It's very difficult to tell the difference between feeling sound and hearing sound, but yes, it's loud. When you were in it, you couldn't hear it in the vacuum of space. It's, it's a very kinetic, very dynamic period of about 10 to 12 minutes. Paramount, right there, we didn't have last minute checks we could do. We only had one engine, it couldn't fail, so it ran at lower pressure. And uh, w when you were in it, you couldn't hear it in the vacuum of space. Another glaring mistake is that none of NASA's images or videos show stars in the background as they should, just complete blackness, likely because exact star maps as they should appear from the moon would be quite difficult to fake. The testimony of different astronauts on different missions in their autobiographies and interviews just muddies the waters even more, some of them bragging about the astonishingly brilliant light of the stars, and others saying they don't remember seeing a single star while on the moon. Such inconsistencies and in the fact that none of NASA's moon pictures feature stars or planets in their appropriate positions should raise a red flag that these astronauts were not on the moon. Also, NASA never filmed either stars or planets. The reason is simple. Before the era of computer enhancement, the stars would have been impossible to fake accurately enough to fool the world's amateur astronomers. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, because yeah, you time. can see, yeah, yeah so as you can see the stars. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah, the stars. Yeah. It's, it's not a black cool void, thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the, there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about you can see it during the day. And when you're, when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight, so you can't see any stars, just like here on Earth. There's all the, there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about you can see it during the day.
When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the sonar curler what, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. <laughs>